bananas. That's not going to be worth it. Come on, bro. I need I need valuable things. I'm not going to make a banana boat nor a coconut boat. Let's be honest here. <laughs> you need the resources. If the resources don't change. In the days and weeks ahead, there would be many new roads formed on Vera. The main one had already been laid by the Pathfinder and his companions. This new priority route would soon begin to have branches leading to new areas and new landscapes yet to be explored. Truly, adventure stirred in the heart of all the Cinderborn who had arrived on Vera. Welcome to Ashes Pathfinders your dedicated and trusted Ash as a Creation podcast. Join us as we share in the journey that reignites the embers and rekindles the flames in the hearts of those long left to cinder. I'm your host, Phoenix, also known as Samorg. I'm joined today by our returning Pathfinders. Let's welcome back Daedalus. Hello, everyone. Also welcome back your dark overlord, Armored Cell. Hello. Hello, hello friends. What's going on with the hood there, homie? You, uh, just cool oh, that's a, or? That's a very generous gift from a unknown, oh, wow. uh, dark overlord. No, nope. it was, uh, <laughs> greatly appreciated. I don't know what he means. It's not me, and I don't know what he's talking it even about. Came with aura. <laughs> I don't know what that aura is. What is the aura? It's not an aura. I'm only surrounded by the Phoenix aura, so just saying. True story. Also, welcome back. The cozy ever murder bunny Faisal. Greetings. Hope everybody's doing fine. And well. <laughs> I just want to note something that we came, we had an, uh, another realization about here on the show moments ago as we got started, everybody. I just want to note for everybody every time you see Faisal here, it is one in the morning as we get started. I just want to put that in perspective. That is dedication. That's, that's a Pathfinder right there, homies. True story. Speaking sure of is. Pathfinder's friends. <laughs> before we dig in right got to give a big shout out to the home of this podcast over at asheshq.com the community curated website for ashes of creation also a shout out to all of the imperial flames those are the supporters here on twitch youtube and patreon thank you so much for keeping this community's flames bolstering greater week after week um also to those of you who are popping off that hype train in chat which you uh, friends can only understand what that means if you're here live on twitch so catch us every sunday at 5 p.m central almost every sunday damn near 99 percent of them right but there it is friends no gotta tell you man this has been a hell of a week this week went by so fast i can't even like put it into words but if you want to support this show you can go over to the pin post over at Ashes Pathfinder on Twitter. Right there at the top, you'll see all the podcast places, one of which is the iTunes one, which could use a little love. And if you leave a comment there, give us five stars. Well, I'm going to read that comment here live on the stream. We'll also play your voice messages if you leave one. You can do that over at 1-539-664-6801. Shoot us a mail over to at or ashes pathfinders at gmail.com we'll get that to us once the grunt gets it to us from vera which is you know as we know we've had some experiments around this right in the past and the you know news travels in a very strange fashion from vera to the planet earth you'd be going are they even in the same cosmos it's a great question okay friends to all of you that are here, man, welcome in. We are at episode 192, and I want to, before I talk about some of the things for the week, I want to let y'all know, we we tried to get Steven on back at the beginning of the year for like the four year or something, and I was like, I think Daedalus and I were talking, it was like, probably like try to get on Steven for like 200, because that's coming up at the end of the, end of the year. I mean, literally before the end of the year, we are going to be at 200 episodes plus. So... Oops. Yeah, dude, 200 freaking episodes, and it's not even out yet. Just putting that out there. Mm. So it's, we're getting close, man. I feel like I need to do something super, 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 like, awesome for the 200th episode. And I don't know what yet. Taking ideas, though. 
So I have an idea. Oh God! Forty-eight hour live streams are going to say <laughs> yeah. No, um, we're, we're thinking like, oh my God! <laughs> no. we're oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like every hundred episodes, you just add a twenty-four hour. He does. Thing, oh. So. That's yeah, such a good dude. idea. Yeah. Oh my god. Y'all homies trying to kill me in real life, man. I mean, you could do like a nap portion for part of the stream. That could be a thing. That's weird, know? bro. I'm gonna be honest, man. Doing stuff like that. So that I don't think I'm the one, you know, for for going to sleep and people watching me at something. Although that'd be a really bro, great way to make the we hours. Need to up. Know. We need to know if you have those, Steven, on these. Come on. No, I, I don't. Yeah, um, see, we want to see what happens when the Dark Overlord mm, sleeps. There's no Dark Overlord. There's sinister no, rises. Not true. Instead. It's a false narrative painted against me, and I just want to make sure I'm talking about that. Okay, friends, Knights of the Phoenix, we are recruiting. In fact, I've got to shout out one of our members, Arthas Dawnbreaker, who has made us some super sick form signatures, which, by the way, Arthur, so you're here, I am uh, using over at asheshq.com's forums, as well as on the Ashes of Creation forums. Um, we are going to be pulling a, a topic from the HQ before we dig into filling and following up, uh, well, actually, like, completing the outline that we had from the developer live stream as of late. We wanted to pick up on can Caravansary today, talk about some things related to that. Um, there's actually some stuff related. There's, like, a sort of, like, this like leak sort of thing. Really, it's more like data mining that occurred. And I will talk about that here shortly as well. It is legit. We're going to talk about it. Um, so Knights of the Phoenix, we are recruiting if you're interested in joining a community-based guild, meaning we are a guild that is formed up for the people first, the game second. We do have focus on Ashes of Creation, but we've got some great people, good times. We have good times. Usually uh, about every other Friday is when I can do it right now. And uh, every other Friday I'm doing currently current uh, community days. Um, I don't think this coming Friday I'm going to do them, but I think the next one that we're going to have for the entire community is going to be on the 16th of September. Um, also... Shout out to y'all for almost 4,900 subs. That's right. We're, we're somewhere close to 500 subs in the last, th what, 30 days on YouTube, on the Ashes HQ YouTube. Nice. Right? Clobbering my other channel by about half, like twice as much, actually. So it's nuts. Um, yeah, we are, we are almost to 5K. So we're catching up to my other channel at this point, which is nuts. Um, but seriously, thanks, everybody. It's amazing. We've got a new... Got to put this up there. Two things have gone up, right? The most recent game guide is up as of Friday on Taverns. Some interesting discussions there. Remember, if you want to see us grow on Ashes HQ, both on YouTube and on the uh, community site, you know, one of the best things you can do is like share it, bookmark the site, go to the YouTube channels, like the videos, like leave some comments, help to help to help it to thrive, thrive in the algorithm. Um, we've got Alpha One VOD still continuing to go out. Um, we have the Ashes talk on World Bosses last Wednesday, and then the game got on Taverns on Friday, and I think I believe tomorrow on Monday we've got the next uh, Ashes Alpha One VOD or a chapter rod that's coming out. So yeah, there you go, friends. Um, oh, also, um, I don't know that I actually have got the thing added yet. Did I add it? I don't think I added it yet. Did I? I need to add it. I'll try to multitask it during the live stream today. But we have Pathfinder merch up on fourth wall. Um, it's in my profile down in the description. I will definitely make sure to add it to the um, podcast uh, on YouTube. So when you catch it there, if you want to grab yourself some uh, Pathfinder swag, you can. Um, but friends, how you guys been doing the past week, gentlemen? How's it going? It's been new in the world of uh, the Pathfinders. Daedalus first, Armored Cell. You try to not to talk about dark stuff. Okay, cool. Daedalus. <laughs> I've just been like working on my outline for my next article. Um, and just maybe a shout out that I did have something go up this past Monday, um, specifically related to mariner naval content so and i already had some really cool interactions with a couple of the community members thank you for posting there um it's always good to have a discussion and if you do have any ideas uh of what you would like to see flip into my dms on discord um you know hit me up there and uh, or hit me up on twitter and would love to hear from the community and what they would like to see me chat about and then participate have the community participate in yeah what about you armored cell mm. um 
what I've done recently is I found a new game I've been playing with my, some of my uh, IRL friends it's called uh, Across the Obelisk. That's pretty fun. It's uh, like a tale, like tale, uh, tale spy across with like it's like multiplayer aspect. It's pretty pretty fun. And I had a dandy Pokemon mm-hmm. campaign uh, on Mon- on last week, which was pretty fun as well. Cool. Onyx. Onyx. Nice. Yeah, Onyx. You know, on community night uh, Friday, I I went and I did my diving. What are you laughing about, dude? With my many deaths? No, no, not oh. your many deaths. I was thinking <laughs> about my my journey to actually uh, at least just have a shack. Which thank you, Arthas, for gifting <laughs> me that shack. Oh yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, right. I would have been naked, afraid, part twenty-seven. That's <laughs> <laughs> so true, dude. I was like, well, we did it solid, though, right? Like we, you know, the, the oh, thing yeah, about like man, yeah, go ahead. I, I mean, I logged in. I logged in, and it was <laughs> night. And I'm like, okay, so I'm just gonna take a few steps here. You, I'm just gonna find my way. And all of a sudden, I just hear something, and I'm like, oh, I'm done. So, and it was like. Um, army of raptors coming at me when i finally got out of there i was like oh finally i'm out of the woods and then all of a sudden as i'm swimming to the other island the piranhas find me now thankfully that i survived that attack by the skin of my teeth and you know thank you for the community for helping me through that uh rage quit level of frustration (laughs) dark life homie that's the norm indeed my my period was a whole month, okay, originally. And y'all are going, why are we talking about ARC? Well, we, we've been playing it for our, our community. We've got a community server over there. we got one of you rising. If you're a homie, you want to join, just hit me up in Discord. I'm totally happy to have more people join us over there. But um, there, there's, like, a lot of things about ARC that, you know, it's not – it is a survival game, but it can be beneficial for, like, you know, like taming, like breeding animals. Like, you can get into some naval content there. Um but yeah, um, how's the Murder Bunny been doing? What's been going on with you there, Murder Bunny? I've been watching Darkness. a lot of TV shows slash movies. <laughs> yeah, like what? One think? one TV show that will shall not be named because of reasons. <laughs> cringe of power is what you're gonna say, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> oh God, dude, so I'm saving that for YouTube, boy. I. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> and uh, I went to the movies recently, and I saw a movie called Nope. But... Nope. That wasn't... Yes. Uh, it was a really nice movie. It's made by <laughs> someone, a uh, comedian called Peely, I think. Uh, Is that from Key and Peele or no? Not yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it might be. Yeah, Is, Is it like uh, about yeah, like cool. some sort of uh, like Peele. creature or something? It's, it's a sci-fi horror. Oh, okay, yeah. That's why I was like, nope. Really? <laughs> wait, yeah. wait, you're telling me that Jordan Peele made a horror flick yes okay i need to check this out just because that's not what i would have expected from him but i'm curious. And it's actually pretty good i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i would consider it wow. to be more action thriller than horror oh really? that's good yes i might actually yeah. watch it then i'm not a huge Wait, horror fan or do you get like do you get a little scared from horror movies things? i just i'm not a i'm, I'm not a fan of like horror like i'll watch like supernatural and that kind of stuff but that's uh that's horror light for me that's as far as i go what happens if you watch like a horror film that's like full frontal you know what i mean full frontal option i mean i just go back to my childhood man i was it was not a good time i was like i caught a little bit of nightmare i caught a little bit of nightmare on elm street that scarred me for life and that was like randomly and so yes and then i'm like not a fan dude i was talking about that recently Dark yeah, Overlord, yeah. you know what to do. <laughs> There's no, I don't actually. I have no idea what you're talking about. So, the stuff of nightmares. Uh, but I did see something you recommended was Lars and the Real Girl. Um, that was that was it. so good. That was yeah. so good. That's awesome, dude. Um, so out of curiosity, um, did you all hear about this uh, interesting? The the word on the street is that. We've data mined something and people yesterday were like going, I remember someone said it like last week. They're like, Hey Sim, did you hear about the, the data mine uh, on um, 
the the map or whatever and i'm like data mine i'm like how are we data mining it like the people are like did you check out the metadata i took it and tried to pull the metadata on photoshop just want to say and i couldn't pull it and i was like mm, sounds sus we need evidence and then got got food i think is who it was if i'm not mistaken in our or giga hydrated actually now is his name uh in discord we were like kind of bouncing around trying to confirm if this was actually real or not it is real actually Yes, and in fact, it's only going to be because you can go to metadata to go, and that's for the two go.com and actually just drop does, in. And how does this work? It, well, so basically, so the metadata. So what it's talking about is like we're pulling in layers. So what happened is, is this is like creating like Photoshop, for example, and there's different layers, yeah. or whatever. The layers are sort of they're still there. They're just invisible. Is so you can go pull the data. And they all have names. Okay. Now, this is this totally aligns because remember Steven was saying how they had to ter- turn off a bunch of the locations. Like when they p- made the map, they had to turn a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff off or whatever, right? So, yeah, yeah there it is here. I'm going to link it in chat. Now, this is only if you want spoilers. If you don't, don't look at it. But it's legit. So this doesn't seem like this is actually a purposeful thing. But there's a lot of locations on here, like creatures, all kinds of things. Someone, I forget who, had actually done, basically taken all this and sort of speculated on, you know, what are creatures, like what are locations, et cetera. But you can look at this and it seems pretty, seems pretty self-explanatory just by looking at it. So I don't really want to look at it too much, to be honest, because I kind of don't want to be like, well, I guess there's a part of me that's a little curious, but I do want there to be like some surprise to it, right? That's interesting. It says the link is expired. Well, just go to that site and drop in the picture that's uh, on the Ashes News if you really want to look. That's literally all you got to do. Um, FYI. So, so interesting. Well, wait, I got the Reddit link. Yeah, second. you can do that too. And there's. Yeah, there's a Google Docs there, link. Too. There's a Google Looks Doc like on it. There yeah. you go. There you go. Yep. Faisal linked it in chat for y'all. So this person yeah, went, pulled it, and I'm I'm critical, right? I'm like, you need to showcase evidence, right, that this is the case, right? I, I don't go taking stuff as, like, word for it because it's easy for people to speculate and try to, you know, spread misinformation or just troll people or, you know, just do it for clout to get some views, whatever the case might be. So I don't believe it unless there's, like evidence to support it there is evidence to support it so this to me looks like a bit of an oops because i think maybe they didn't expect that people were gonna pull the metadata on the image (laughs) feels bad man right but there it is you still gotta figure out some of this stuff so it's gonna be fun to see who maybe speculates and hypothesizes where these locations are at and etc etc and then actually is right um there's clearly a lot of them so yeah if you got tons of time and you want to know life this go for it homies i'm gonna tell you right now yeah sure that's I'll like throw it. holy holy moly it's a man. lot yeah it's a lot it is a lot yeah, yeah um but anyway it is legit so if you see that information just know that the pathfinders went and did some research and confirmed it is indeed true and accurate Okay, now how much of that's going to make it into the final version of the game? How much of it's just Alpha 2 info? It's a great question, but there it you go. It could also be information that Dark Lord wants to deceive you with. I have but no I idea what that means. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> but you should be ashamed, and, ashamed of yourself. I'm just sharing information I found on the internet, uh, on me on Reddit, Ashes Reddit. Um, hey, I'm not I'm it. not sitting here having two overlords, oh. one on my like both on my left or right. I don't know how you put me on stream, but hey, two overlords. I ain't got I can't play with that no more. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just a cult, I'm just a cult leader. I'm not the dark overlord. You, you gotta understand for reference, didn't we have a conversation about this earlier? When you look at like let's use Tolkien's world as an example, right? You got Morgoth, okay, okay who's a Valar, yes. right? And then you've got what Sauron, who's like basically a dark sorcerer who like serves him, which is not really sor- sorcerer, not really. He's like what my technically his shadow. Saying. Yeah, basically it's like you know junior grade still can wreak havoc and everything. So the reference they made is like Morgoth, Sauron in the hood over there. But no, no, I think it was no. Sauron and then Morgoth. 
Yeah, I think that's what it was. Wait, are you who's you who you saying is Morgoth? Um, that would be uh, our our friend Armored Cell. So then you're saying he's the darkest of the dark. Then is what you just said. I know. I think you're both equally dark. I'm just. I'm gonna throw that out there. See, you keep changing it so quick though. So I kind of feel like I don't know if I can trust that perspective. And neither should any of you all. Okay. Trust, trust <laughs> is le- relative. You know, what? dark overlord. Trust is relative. People are not here to talk about Sim and the Dark Overlord nonsense. Let's get on to talking about Ashes of Creation. Okay, that's what we're here for, everybody. I feel like it's important to keep that in mind when we get onto these rants. You all should really be thinking. Nobody that's watching this right now really, I don't believe, wants to actually engage in these false narratives, okay? I don't think. I hope not anyway, because I believe they're friends and stuff. So anyway, I guess with that being said, though, why don't we kind of move on and talk about Ash as a creation? Okay, cool. Um, let's talk about Meat Hooks', uh, Meat Hooks and his, uh, his post over on um, asheshq.com. Now, I, I, w- I encouraged people, I believe, last week to go over there because occasionally when you go over there and you actually are uh, sort of like sharing um, your thoughts on the forums and our forums or whatever, sometimes we pull those and we'll talk about them here on the show because especially if they're like really good to talk about. And this one specifically, uh, I thought was actually a pretty, a pretty good one to talk about. Uh, this one was essentially titled how will you spend your time question mark okay what does that mean exactly well as you can see on the screen you can read it now if you're not here or you're not watching on youtube i'll read this okay so me stated the latest news about naval combat and some really great conversations in discord have caused me to step back and reevaluate my potential ashes experience from a new perspective i like many of you will not be able to know life the game As much as I'd like to do so, my job and familial duties come first. That leaves me a few hours each night to hop into the exciting world of Vera and try to have some meaningful experiences. I imagine myself running a shipyard, people coming to me to have the finest ships on the sea made for them. But the more I learn, the more I see this as not quite a reality if I want to do anything else in the game. The time constraints mean I have to choose. Go gathering for materials to have some smaller ships to sell, or make my way to the haunted ruins with a group of friends, kind of the point of a social game, and gain experience and potentially some loot to sell. I'm always, <laughs> almost always going to choose to run with the group, especially if they need really need another member, leaving my aspirations of shipbuilding to fall further and further behind. I'll have to see how it all plays out come launch, and perhaps Alpha 2 will provide further clarity as to how I can juggle things in game. I'm curious how you all, those of you with some somewhat limited playtime at least, are planning on spending your early days in Vera. What will you set out to accomplish? How will you choose to spend your time? So we're going to answer this question here ourselves. Now I encourage all of you, you feel free to engage in chat. If it's a really great comment, you tag me and I see it, I will throw it up using featured chat here um, on our live stream. But for those of you that are listening or watching on YouTube, I definitely encourage you, and those of you that are here too, if you want to share your own ideas, for example, definitely go over there and contribute into a response on the forum. It'd be great. But gentlemen, in no particular order, what are your thoughts on that? What what are your what are your panderings, ponderings, murder bunny intentions, uh, false nor- <laughs> overlord uh, ideations and <laughs> cult perspectives, please? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll kick it off here, guys. Um, like personally, I have been thinking a lot about this, and I'm I have definitely had my fair share of no life in games in the past. Like particularly, you know, the Blizzard game and some other MMOs where I've just like really like pushed hard and and um and and did like the whole try hard life. But I would say with Ashes, I really want to go back to what. I really resonated or what really resonated with me about MMOs is, is having some like community, like designated community events and like doing dungeon runs together and really kind of focusing on the social aspect. Cause over time, the MMO experience really deteriorated for me from that. Let's like, you know, log on, you know, like a bunch of people you're getting together to do stuff either spontaneously or scheduled outside of like a raid. I'm talking about more like smaller group activity. 
um, as a primary and it deteriorated into almost it being like a solo experience leveling up because either there was a level gap or people were leveling faster or there just wasn't the right you know, combination of people online to be able to do things. So personally, I would love to kind of get to that feel in terms of like just general play style. But I I would like to previous from like different from previous, I'd like to not necessarily try to do it all like at once, like, you know, have, you know, some times when I'm like, okay, today I'm just going to do crafting or today I'm going to go do dungeon runs or farm for materials or something and really just kind of keep it more balanced because I think that's going to help me enjoy the experience more. And one of the things that really draws me to Ashes of Creation is the design philosophy that you don't necessarily need to be at that end game. End game is not is a dirty word in their in the developer's opinion. It's something that you need to make the journey just as fun as that end game, whatever that end game might be. So I'm hoping to have those experiences and focus my time in like community building and spending time with you know my fellow guildmates as opposed to just you know pushing for like i you know i want to have a freehold or i want to do this i mean those things will be byproducts of me just spending time having fun because i think going that like you know try hard route it's a very quick way to do burnout especially knowing that you know most of us have access to those early like iterations like alpha 2 and so on you don't want to play the death out of everything because then you don't really have anything to discover Right. Maybe do a lot of experimentation to figure out what you want to do, like class wise, and then really invest the time in having that quality experience with guildmates be the thing that, that you do. That's my take on it. Well, I think I think everyone knows what I'm going to be doing. No, we don't. Please tell us. <laughs> Got to find some test subjects. What? And try and and trying to work out how does corruption works, the best way to go about it, and finding my main oh, religion. Shit. I need, so what I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. is, like, I remember you guys, like, getting really worried about people killing each other at the very beginning. We had to talk I about may that, or yeah. Wow, really, homie? <laughs> it's all right, I'm not, man. I'm not, I still accept you. But, but I was thinking, right? Yeah. Like, people, people get punished for crimes. Can, do you reckon I could do community service before I even do the crimes? <laughs> so I, I can, the more community service I do, the more people I can kill because I've already done the, paid for the crime. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I can have like a little whiteboard in the background and I can just like every, every I don't know, every episode. Like that's a trick service, question. I, can, like, I don't know what this, you mean. This sounds just. This sounds suspiciously like the main alt like distinction that no. certain dark overlords no, on this doesn't. podcast have no, it discussed. Doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, damn it. it doesn't. Lord of light, Lord of not so light. <laughs> um, but yeah, like yeah, okay. I'm gonna be definitely looking at like because like mm. I'm not the only person that's gonna be looking down like religion or like the law of the land. So I'm gonna be looking at the forums and be looking at like the. Uh, Oh, what are the, the the lawmakers, the book writers? I've got what they're called. Um, scribes. Uh, oh, scribes. That's the one. Got to see what that because they'll be writing everything down. They'll, I don't know how exactly it's going to work, but I'm sure they'll be able to write down people's uh, adventures and stuff. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading, a lot of bookkeeping, trying to find out as much information as I can, so that I can be oh, at the God. top, at the, the pinnacle of the information that I can get for the religion. Are they going to be called the, the Dark Chronicles be... of Stevenism? Yes. <laughs> so you're going to be a scribe in game. <laughs> I mind. love that. It's funny. That's, I that do hope they give us the ability to create literature. Actually, that would, I, oh that would be, God. that would make me, that would make me giddy because then don't. Armored Cell could have his own manifesto. Um, yeah. Do you know why I don't though? Because you all remember, you all remember what Meat Hooks did, right? When we played that community night together in City of Heroes. You all remember who watched a couple episodes back, right? When I showed you the, the, I don't really know how to describe this, but just, just absolute classic. lies, blasphemy. Classic. No, it's not classic unless you're into just really being mean, mean to your friends. Is the only thing I can really say. You know, do you? Does anybody? How about you, uh, Faisal? What's your, uh, what are your thoughts on that? 
Go ahead. What's it called? It's just gonna be a little bit different than our usual MMOs. Um, because with each node that they're trying to do is ba basically build communities. Um, farming is also going to be very different. Like, no lifing in this game is is going to be a thing. However, I feel it's not going to be the same in terms of resource gathering. Like, you won't just farm all day. You'll farm some of the day, then go try to kill things <laughs> most of the time. Um, it, there's also going to be a relationship with you, like between crafters and people that uh, collect resources. Uh, so that's going to be a, little, a lot different than how normally things work, because you usually go in MMOs collecting everything, crafting everything, and be the top most artisan in uh in the world of thousands <laughs> so sure maybe you won't be able for say to be the best ship crafter if you don't put a lot of effort into it but um that doesn't mean that you can't put your say in it because mm -hmm. um really depends what node you are, where you're at, at which node, and what the community around you plays around. So if you're in a, in a node and you're the only ship builder there, so, hey, you just got the, the ultimate profit from everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm actually so, lo looking at the comments, the different people that contributed to that post. There's some really good stuff on there. I contributed, but I, I'm gonna, I, I wanted to share the majority of it for here. You know, when Ashes started way back in the day, when we first started this like game development process, like I was in a very different place back then than I am now, you know, like, I mean, I still I still adhere to what I, I've always said, which is I'm, I'm really not investing in any other MMORPG too heavily at this point. Um, even when I have played some other ones along the way, I still, you know, Ashes has been the priority because I'm, I'm really saving like that that dedicated like good old college try if you will to just giving it everything i got once more because in the past i've had some pretty prestigious moments in a few different mmorpgs and i really thrive on it i thrive on like the community aspects of like doing raiding doing pvp i like doing stuff solo so i felt like you know i mean i've been like former emperor in games like eso and you know top battle master and like swotor and you know doing the ranking and stuff and like world of warcraft etc but um you know i kind of like i don't know that i i don't know that i'm gonna really focus on that as much now i think i originally started with the idea that i was going to um, but I mean, I'm still looking at Ash as being a couple years out at this point, like full launch, right? Not, not alpha two, alpha two quarter two, maybe next year is kind of where I'm at. And with that being my own estimation, I'm still talking like it's going to be a while, man, until we get to that point and more things will change by them too. I think like my focus is going to be like providing good information for people in the community, Ashes HQ, the podcast, um, I think it's going to be like community nights and the stuff we do together several nights a week where that's like the focal point. Um, but I've, I've been growing in interest in doing stuff that I haven't really made my priority in an MMORPG before. Um, the idea of like, especially when I went and did the game guide for, for us this past week and did, did that one, I got a bit of a refresher in, in taverns and I was like, man, you know, taverns are going to be such a big deal. But there's so many things that are going to be very influential in the game. But taverns just sound really good. Like the idea of, you know, I mean, how good would it be to synergize is like I'm a, I'm a cook, right? So I can cook some food with really good, you know, you know, additional buffs to them potentially, right? And then how's the that food and the, the barkeep being able to provide that for people to purchase? And then, you know, getting the buff and stuff for people within the zone of or the influence area, which we don't know what that is yet of a tavern, um, to where they continue to benefit from that buff. And I'm like, man, that just sounds like a really good time being like a bar, having like a, a tavern and RPing it and like, you know, like bringing in some of the tavern games that are found in the world. And that sounds like really, a really good time. But then again, so does like trade and crafting. Like this is potentially going to be 
probably the the best crafting system I've played in an MMORPG for myself personally. And I'm finding myself more and more interested. And we even have like a talk around this. I think it was um it was like this pad's like either Thursday or Friday, right? We were talking about it in an Ashes talk on the Twitch channel here, and we discussed basically like how in this game you Oh man, that moment when you, you completely lose your train of thought, isn't that unfortunate? It happens. Oh, what can I say? I burned three thousand calories a day. I'm way over over the line on what I should be doing. But my point is is I got it back again. Uh when you when you look at like the greater, you know, the influence that economy is gonna have, like economy and trade specifically are gonna have on the greater world. I mean, I even look at it from the perspective of nodes. Yeah. Like we were talking about this, and this was the the sort of core of that discussion, we kind of talked, I think someone was saying like, what's your preference for a node? And like, it, you know, I used to think like there's democratic like government for like the scientific and you've got, um, you've got your economic node and you know, like, well, how is, how is the seat, the mayoral seat bought is bought, right? You buy it, you know, your military, you've got to like do it through combat, like divine, you're going to have to do it through your religious order. Um, and then of course, Democracy is essentially the scientific one. People vote. So the economic one, though, we were talking about this. And I was like, man, you know, like imagine like a military node and an economic node developing a really good relationship. I feel like that's going to be natural, like to where you've got like the military node going, yo, we can send some homies to like look out for some of your stuff. We could do some trade agreements. You know, you sort of like line our pockets. We keep you safe. We potentially come help out in certain situations. So there's like, I mean, economic, man, money talks. If you got a lot of money in an MMORPG, man, there's a lot of power you got. And I would say, I would even argue in a lot of ways, there's a lot more power you can have over even people who are really skilled in PvP. Because you can potentially pay people, pay mercenaries like to, to do your bidding, to do your work for you. So, um there's a lot of layers to that though. So the idea of like an economic node, it sounds really good. I mean, clearly you're going to need to have like, you have to do right by your, your citizens and you're going to have to combine your resources to probably get that chair to mayoral chair to sort but of lead. But yes, you do have the factors of a religious node. Like you get to have a tomb that's under you at all costs. You you can get high level items or whatever mm. you want. I'm not <laughs> I'm not playing into that. Do you know why? Because that's if uh, no, because I'm not a dark overlord. That's why. Because I don't go into the tombs. I'm not trying to, you know, take the conquered dead and bury them underneath the the node. If I was a mayor, um, that's dark overlord vibes, and only a dark overlord, a true dark overlord, would really mention something like that i just want to note that I think hey it's i'll become the bunny bunny lord i don't <laughs> bunny care bunny. like as long as i get my loot <laughs> i'll become I'll the bunny lord against, uh, undead wait what uh, are you not going to be versing the undead is that what you're saying you're aligning with the no i did uh, not say that homie no i did not that is yeah. a really horrible uh misrepresentation and uh molding of my statement into something you're the one with the hood you're the hood the hood i appreciate the gift but um... i didn't give you that gift <laughs> this is lies i tell you this is not true okay i i am honest you all i tell the truth of you guys i just don't know man who you want to believe here really right the person that's hosted this show and um done right by you all but, for, but, for ages but actual talk Yes. Like if if a religious node gets <laughs> certain items from the underground dungeon that it has and sells it off to the economic node, then they would sell it to the military node. That's oh. just profit in itself all around. I mean that's that's gonna be that the politics, man, in this game. The the the, the agreements that are made and then the back, you know, the, the additional agreements that are made, like, hey, you go work this deal out with them, but you're really going to give it to us and we're going to hook you up and you're going to like work with them. And you all think you've got this really good thing going, but really you're working for us. And on, on like I mean, the node I level, mean, you, also have, you, ha you also have the scientific node. Why would I deal mm. with the military node and protect my stuff if I can just send it to the scientific node and they can just do all the transporting for me? 
<laughs> Possibly. Just don't tell it. Just don't tell it's cursed. Don't tell it's cursed. Just just send it away. <laughs> Why is it cursed? <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Sim. No, it's not true. Uh, here's a here's a comment from chat from horrendous, right? He said, uh, right here, anytime today. Um, feature chat. What can I say, dude? It's just what can I say? I might just have yeah, to read it. <laughs> this thing is a bust sometimes, isn't it? We'll, we'll get we'll get to it in a minute because apparently it's just broken, so it feels bad. And I hate this thing sometimes. Oh my gosh, look at this. Especially hiring mercenaries when you have caravan full of mithril or verite, which verite was actually a thing, if you remember. I think that was actually mentioned in one of the, uh, what was it called? The wasn't that what was? Uh, it was like shared during the um, one of the cosmetic sets or whatever. I think it was called verite. It was shared there. Pretty sure. Yeah. Not sure. Anyway, horrendous said I want to farm fish and sell them for my freehold. Crafting gathering for the guildies. All right, Ron. Anybody else? Know. Any other thoughts, gentlemen? I'm gonna we're gonna we're actually transitioning to some good here. Some good. Some good good. Picking up on if, Caravan three. Okay. Now I'm gonna mm -hmm. go ahead and link this for everybody here in chat. Here you go. Wow, Daedalus, the Dark Lord, really. Um so here we go. We're going to talk about the Caravan 3. There was a now there's a whole blurb on this right here, specifically talking about Caravans also had a rework. Now, we didn't talk about Caravans in the Ashes talk, and Game Guide obviously doesn't touch on that, and people were definitely talking about it. Um, we're going to talk about this. So overall, the Caravan 3 idea and the, the rework, so let me hit on the bullet points here, and then we'll kind of basically hit the bullet points, kind of talk about our feedback around it, thoughts around it, maybe overall thoughts around the topic in general, and then kind of move on because there's definitely discussions around the open world uh, PvP. Well, basically the, the um, open water PvP and, and, and deep waters out in the ocean, right? When you're not in the coastal areas. So players create components that live on caravans, which changes the stat values for the caravan itself, which can include turning radius, turning speed, movement speed, armor, health, and damage mitigation. And that's all done at the Caravansary, right? So previously, we we know that Intrepid's got a modular design for, well, a lot of things. Caravans are no, no exception, are they? And we knew that there were a lot of different components to the Caravans as a whole. But what what are your general thoughts around there being like these additional measures that sort of like uh, can sort of impact these components on a caravan thoughts in general i mean i think it's it's good that they give strategy they add they're adding like layers of strategy to everything and and mm. at least it feels like the short tra trajectory continues to be choices matter right if i decide you know i want my caravan to be more nimble right i'm gonna do maybe like turning speed or travel speed if I want my care my caravan to be like hardier, because I know I might get attacked, right? I might add more armor or something that gives it more hit points or something like that. So I do like that idea. I mean, it's it's also similar to when we talked about the naval stuff too, is you have choices on what components you can put on. And like kind of similarly, right, you have to be in a shipyard to install those components. Well, you have to be in a caravansary to install whatever components, you know, to, mm -hmm. to build that. And plus there's a spawn time of like two to five minutes, depending on what you want. So it also gives an opportunity to say like, okay, when should I schedule this? So I know that that five minutes isn't going to matter as much, right? Or am I going to do it in prime time or am I going to do it like in the mm. cloak of night, like some dark overlords do? So, um, you know, you wow. can... Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but I I do like the idea of this and plus the fact that it's very interactive. Like you can, you know, coordinate with other players, you know, they can have you can have insurance on this. So there's so many layers in this system. Um, once again, right, it 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 feels very complex. Um, I think foundationally it, it it's also good though that they have like 
all this detail kind of worked out and they're able to speak to it now, even before an alpha hits. So it feels like they have a pretty solid foundational design um, from what I can tell for this. So I, I do like the idea that they're adding that level of complexity. And I don't even want to say complexity. It's more like level of differentiation um, at this, even at like in this core system. Um, cause it's, it seems like it's a common theme, regardless of what system you're talking about is they like to add layers onto things and the modular design really kind of helps us make choices as players. It's not just something very linear in terms of an experience. Here's a business proposal. Oh my gosh. Dude. In my caravan. Oh my Let's gosh. Go. We'll make a Imagine show. Imagine having <laughs> pixie dust screens. The flamest of rims. And don't forget about the drunken uh, uh, dwarf that can boost your ride. Come on, guys. Come oh, on. dude. That, that, that's a dude. Bling. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, Caravan drift. drift. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. You know, you remember that caravan skin that was like, it looked like a literal traveling like tavern. Yep, mm-hmm. I remember Dude, that one. One oh of my, my favorite ones. God, yeah. I hope that becomes a thing. I really do like some sort of a group caravan thing. Oh my god, that would be amazing. So, challenge to the community. Someone out there who wants to create content, why don't you just create a show called "Pimp My Caravan"? There you go. I mean, I'm not going to do it, but someone should. That's another thing, right? So, like, there's so many people that can. Well, each time they make a new uh, component of the game, that's got so many layers. There's not many people going to go so super in depth into it, like the nitty gritty of it. But so someone's eventually going to do it, and they will make that pimp my ride sort of scenario of, I can make the best caravan for you because I know all the details of it. Just like me with the religion, like there's going to be people who are going to specialize in this one craft that's going to make it so good. Like mm-hmm. the best thing about the modular design on the caravans is if you're all tanks, like if you've just got an all group of tanks, you you don't you don't need your um. You don't need your caravan to be tanky because you're the tanks. But if you're squishy, then yes, you're going to want the caravan to be more tanky, right? So there's, it's got to complement or synergize with your class that you're going to be using. So that's that's probably the best part about the modular design of the caravans. So the caravan three, so essentially you've got to take materials to the caravan three, right, in order to apply these bonuses the assign these stats right Mm -hmm. yes this right here i want to read this one here when you decide to launch the caravan your perspective will lead to a world map perspective that sits above the node and you will have 360 lines that live outside of the node area at a good distance 150 sorry 100 to 150 meters from the node and you will spawn the caravan there it will take Two to five minutes, depending on the level of the caravansary, for that caravan to spawn at that location outside of the node. During that time, you can teleport to that launch location from the node itself so that people cannot follow you. You can also port your group uh, with you to the launch location. Once the caravan construction site is finished, your caravan is ready to mount and you are ready to move along to its destination. That is a pretty big change. That's a huge change, actually, because originally you just go and you would sort of like sign up and everybody would be at the location and they would just sort of go. And this is very different. So what do you think of this change? Because it's a pretty massive change for caravans. I do like the fact that you have like a launch location so that, you know, it gives, I guess, some level of safety at the starting point now granted once you get in the open world like all bets are off but i do like that there's a little bit of a buffer so you have in a sense like a fighting chance um to make it along i mean i think i still think the ideal scenario is if you're launching a caravan make sure you have a good circle of mercs um or people that can help you with that um so that you can move it along and i do i we haven't gotten to the next piece right but i do <laughs> like the fact that there's also like a, a radius within a node if you could just make it there it get also again it, it feels like it's a good balance between 
the dangers of the open world um, versus, mm. you know, just launching it and and having people like just stalk you for it. Oh, he's launching a caravan. So now you right. have like a lot of people in the city kind of gathering there. You kind of need to know where the caravan spawn. That's not to say that somebody can't be lying in wait there, but still. I do I do like that they're trying to kind of give a balanced approach versus not really thinking it through. Um which which has happened in other games. Well, I also hope that um you can do more than one um caravan. So you can do like a dummy caravan like on a le- on the south side when you're actually heading north. That would be so, great. So that way it'll be, it'll be like a notification that the south one's about to spawn. Someone's right. gonna wait there, but no one's gonna take it because you're actually going north. That's another one of the benefits i can see Mm -hmm. you don't need to because like there's gonna be people camping and waiting for you to come out yeah because like we were talking about in chat right here on twitch too is like you know it's it's it seems like it's gonna be very likely to be predictable right people are gonna go like oh we have an idea a general idea of where these locations are at we're gonna split our people up but therein lies some of the cost benefit analysis right the risk reward part because where people might just go we're just gonna sort of camp the spots you're not really going to know exactly for sure where they're going to be. So there is a bit of, there is a bit of time there to sort of get some momentum going. People got to sort of consolidate their troops potentially. I mean, it's still going to be a hell of a battle when caravans get attacked, no doubt. But um, I definitely, I definitely agree. I think that that's a pretty big bonus. Um, So this one, the radius will be visual to you in the world. As you approach another node, when you cross that line, you reach a safety zone. The events surrounding the caravan and the ability to attack that caravan stops and it gets auto moved into the caravansary. Okay, so you've, this this feels sort of like similar to. I'm not saying it's the same thing, but I see similarities related to where we're going to go later, talking about the open water PvP, naval content, etc. Right, the open seas versus coastal areas, and there were some discussions we had around that. But I, I actually, what do you think about that sort of instant? element to you get inside the zone and you're good this goes right to the caravansary some people might have issues with that yeah go ahead yeah i mean i guess it i think we have to think in relative terms Mm -hmm. also right this is a huge world clearly right so it's not like you're not going to have ample opportunity Mm -hmm. to take out a caravan i mean i I do like that there's a little bit of a buffer there, right? Because again, it's it's balancing risk versus reward. And it also gives a window of opportunity to people attacking, and then there's a strategy to it. So you can't necessarily mm. just randomly see a caravan like a you know, a few steps out of town and then grab a bunch of people and go and take it out. Cause that, mm. in my opinion, that that's gonna play into a Zerg type of mechanic. Right, that's not to say you're not going to be able to do that like in the open world, but it it gives it gives people a choice in terms of travel time to get to this caravan and find this caravan for one, but get to the caravan as well. So it does, I think, balance out the risk and reward in, in a good way to have that 360 around a node that you know I think people would exploit otherwise. If that makes sense, I mean, I, I do feel like it's important. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good a good perspective to have as well. I like that. Forgive me, hooks and check talking about. I wish I, I was a highwayman. So when we say it's kind of, when you get into the zone, it's going to automatically mm-hmm. go to the mm-hmm. kind of uh, caravan industry. Yeah, we're we talking like it's just going to like disappear and reappear mm-hmm. there, or is it going to like like I'm hoping yeah. you can actually visualize it and see it go there, and not just <sighs> yeah. disappear. It sounds like it, because it, based on what it says here, right, it gets auto-moved into the air caravansary. So auto-moved, does that mean teleported? I'm hoping it just means it's passed there. Yeah. So I think that would be cooler. I, yeah, because yeah, then you could see it coming in like it's like mm. a more of a social thing. Like, oh, yeah, look at all the caravans coming into like, town. Oh, they yeah. made it, right? Like, oh, look who made it in. Yeah. 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 But how optimal is that going to be? I don't know. <laughs> You thinking from a murder bunny perspective or like just in general of like game systems or not actually gaming system perspective. <laughs> <laughs> For once he's not thinking about hey, murder bunny stuff and things. Hey, if I was thinking murder bunny, I would have had them at the middle of the road. Yeah, <laughs> hey. <so good. laughs> 
<laughs> so this is pretty cool though, right? Because they, they said also then you reach a pit stop. This can either be your final destination or you can relaunch it again. You do not need to stop at nodes along the way. If you want to keep going, you can keep going. But if you're in trouble and are being attacked, you can have the option of going to a node with a caravan three so you can direct your caravan to that node. Further thoughts. Interesting. Much more, I mean, from my perspective, with these details, I'm like, this is a much more elegant caravan system, which sounds amazing. But thoughts? Um, well, what I'd think is with the pit stops, I'm also hoping that you can repair or like um, maybe change out a few modules at the, if they're more upgraded at the other nodes. Because like at your node, you might only have like a certain level of kind of as like parts you can get a hold of, but at the new node, there might be better parts. So I'm hoping you can like maybe switch out a few because you're coming up out to different mobs or different environments. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about the pit stop thing. I guess it depends on how they do it um, and how many pit stops you could potentially have between the nodes. Because I think it goes back to what I was saying about mm -hmm. it being like meaningful and strategic and having the right window yeah i i think it's a good idea on paper i just like to see how it plays out um because again right it could be potential um i don't want to say not potential for exploitation but i think it could break the flow of right. <laughs> and that risk versus reward balance if you have too many abilities to kind of stop in between a node um, so I think that's just something they need to balance. And then how would those work, right? Is it you have more pit stops depending on the size of the node and its ZO and its respective ZOI? You know, like what is that? How does that actually work? And how long can you stay in the pit stop also mm. is another thing as well. Um, so I think that's something they need to balance out. And one thing Nera in chat had asked, um, you know, should you be able to block caravans like, you know, 20 mounts or something in the gate? No. I mean, I just feel like that, you know, collision thing is an exploit. Um, I just I never was a fan of collision um, in general. And I think with a caravan, I just think it just doesn't make sense. I feel like if you're on a mount standing in front of a caravan and that caravan's barreling through you're going to get, you know, you're going to be road pizza at that point because it's going to yeah. run, run through you, right? <laughs> let's let's get like, let's like, like, like a, what's, what's it, Mad Max scenario and get like spikes <laughs> at the front of your caravan and just like, exactly. Ran, like oh, that would be pretty sick, dude. Car versus people, car's going to win every time, guys. Some rock and roll <laughs> racing stuff, huh? Hey, hey, why spikes? Just drink it up with explosives. Kaboom. <laughs> wow. I get those flashbacks like, of um, gnomes and wow right like, now. Orcs. They've got like the um, they have like a, a, a steamroller at the front that's got like spikes. So it's like, oh yeah, that'd be oh good. I God, would love dude. that. Mm -hmm. It's called the tenderizer, just for yeah. <laughs> they list the the thing. The, here's the problem with your with your like no no touchy in game thing, right? You don't want that physical contact. People want to RP in game, right? You need to as someone who RPs. I feel like you should appreciate this. People want to RP in game. They want to touch. Right, they wanna they wanna be able to move up to their other person's <laughs> avatar, right? I mean, you gotta remember. On, Wait a, a minute, this is going down a very dark overlord path. I'm is just gonna though? say here. Hold on, here's my reference. Now you all decide, and if you say this your is your reference, better not be Goldshire. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, but similar to Goldshire, um. Remember you when you go to like I don't know man maybe you want to like touch in game and you're like get as close to me as you can my friend we're gonna RP whatever we want to RP I don't know what that's gonna be you all are the RP <laughs> listen armor cell don't laugh too much but the point is you go to a, you go to like a tavern right remember you get buffs when you sleep in beds together remember yeah so I think it's important that you know touching is acceptable in some parts of the game. Right now, well, if you I'm, say I'm just talking about like in terms stuff. of yeah, I'm just I'm talking mm -hmm. about like where people use it to grief. I think that's where you've got to balance it. I mean, I think in towns it should be fine, right, to have that. But when it comes to a caravan, I just feel like that that's just that's overkill, right? It's it it's kind of a lazy strategy, in my opinion, right? 
It's good that we made some people in chat uncomfortable. This is how I feel when you all paint the false narrative Wait a against me. There's no we here. I was trying to like stop it. You just kept going with the, the narrative. So. <laughs> Man. So, so you're saying you are okay with some touching in game. I'm okay with collision in game. I don't know this dark path you keep going down <laughs> to get me to agree to something. You know, I'm not you oh, know hey, signing was, over uh, my soul and blood, Dark Overlord. Yeah, we okay. Talked about the lip not oh. long ago. Wait, what? <laughs> Succubus? <What>? Huh? <laughs> A really great segue, friends. That wasn't it, but this is where we're gonna go next. We're gonna talk about naval stuff. Yay! Let's get away from the weird touching things and get into that. I love when I see a cyan chat from Cheryl because it means like, oh, she's like, oh, this is cringe. And it's like, well, welcome to my world. Okay. So we talked about the caravan changes. We talked about the caravansary. We talked about some of the... <laughs> okay. I didn't even want to read the hashtag in chat. Okay. Now let's kind of piggyback off that idea, though, and talk a little bit more about things like naval caravans and here's a really great segue question on the q a now there weren't a lot a lot of them uh here but we're gonna talk about this one so the question was will players be able to deliver straight from the naval caravan as a ship in a dock area dedicated for deliveries or will they need to transition to a land caravan for the city and drive inside the city walls all right here's the answer depends on the type of transport you are using if you have launched a land-based caravan, it can only be received at caravanseries. However, from a naval perspective, harbors that are located in specific areas around the world, around the coast, are points of interest that get adopted by a node when they reach certain levels in proximity to that harbors, or if the node gets vassaled by a sovereign node in relation to their vassal owning that harbor. You can launch merchant ships. So merchant ships interact with the harbor in a very similar fashion, the caravans interact with caravanseries. They have much larger capacity. They can stop at other harbors in the same way that caravans can stop at caravanseries, for example, another nose, right? And harbors have a disembarkment zone that lives near the harbor. If you make your merchant ship to that threshold, it will be guided into the harbor and will be safe. But when you launch your ship from a harbor, it is much like a caravan, with the difference that merchant ships cannot become land caravans. They must stay as merchant ships. Very interesting. The boom. Yeah, there goes the dynamite that Basil was talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I I love the idea that if you commit to a ship, you've got to mm -hmm. go the ship route. I think that makes the fact that they've added a lot more sea space much like cooler, in my opinion because you have that option and you know i talked about this a little in um uh, in my article but the different types of ships too i just yes. i can imagine like a naval caravan with like a large merchant ship and then you're also launching like these warships beside it like in a flotilla <laughs> i a love that what do you use the word but what do you use the word flotilla i love it <laughs> um so you know definitely i i feel like having like those kind of things it's just it's gonna create so much like in my opinion meaningful conflict and fun gameplay loops when you have those naval mm -hmm. caravans because you can have an all-out naval battle um which you know again it, it gives meaning to that whole once you get into the open mm -hmm. seas man all bets are off yes um and i love that and i and i love that they are adding that same level of interaction that they would with land caravans with C ones now, but especially because they have a lot more real estate to be able to do that in. So that was like my mm -hmm. most like favorite like nerd uh, nerdgasm uh, oh, what? reference there. The nerdgasm reference was mm -hmm. the fact that you could have like you have to commit to a C caravan if you're going to do that. There. Any other thoughts on the gentleman? Did they announce what's the biggest ship in the game yet? Or it's a Galleon, right? Didn't you mention yeah, Galleon? I think they mentioned Galleon, but I don't know whether that was the biggest yeah. ship. Well, he mentioned or Galleon. Or confirmed as a... Yeah, he didn't cite if that was... But I mean, you, know, you can go over to the HQ. We talk about the sizes, but there's no reference to what 
the different like uh classifications like ships will be because i mean i don't know man vera could have some like random ships that are considered whatever they're considered I just don't know i mean mm-hmm. look how big that damn behemoth in the water is gonna be right like geez dude <laughs> shoot the, yeah. that's that's why i'm questioning it like is is the galleon going to be big enough mm. we're gonna need a bigger boat See, that's a really good, that's a really good question, actually, because I like when I'm sitting here, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the HQ right now and, and looking at it as a reference, right? And you've got, um, oh my gosh, I don't actually have it listed on here. This is crazy, dude. I don't know why I don't have it listed on here. I thought I did. But there are, oh, I have it listed on some something else. But yes, they're personal group and a raid. Yeah, so there's definitely like um, three classifications, I think. And I think that that would probably be fitting to what TL's talking about in chat. Like when you got like your own little tiny boat right something small but you're gonna have like mm-hmm. group and then you got like the raid and the raids got like, galleon i feel like i feel like that would be i feel like a galleon's got to be in the classification as the third tier right but necessarily the only one in that tier um because you got to have different people that operate different things on that one in a group you probably only have like maybe a couple a few things that maybe operated i wouldn't imagine that you're gonna it's gonna be as extensive as like you need a full eight party for a group you know, versus like a raid, need a whole 40 people on a ship like that would be kind of ridiculous, I think. Um, but I think it's yeah. also a good question, like how many how many positions will be required to be filled to operate the largest ship? Right. Efficiently know? or operate in general? I feel like that's a good question, like baseline. And then what would efficiently be like is I feel like there could be multiple um, locations on a ship that like, you know, multiple turrets. You need someone who can operate a turret to at least five, but like, you know, you're mm-hmm. going to have to be like positioning the ship correctly. If you're only going to have one person, you know, um, you get away with more if you have someone on each side, because no matter what direction you're going, you're going to be able to take a shot at some point. But um, yeah, because I feel like you need to have like the like to function like adequately and then like the minimal but if adequately is like, I don't know, let's say t- t- uh, 12 different spots on the ship that could be manned, then you've got people who are like able to chill and like, you know, maybe do like combat to sort of like aid or, you know, who knows, maybe you're messing with cells too. I don't I mean, know. I mean, I you know. always need that monkey on the ship. Come on, bro. That's like the most important part. Yeah, it's yeah, true. It's the monkey. Yeah. You got to need, you need the entertainment, right, Basil? <laughs> yep. Oh, man, dude. Um, I can't have Sim as my captain because every time I look at Sim, his bald head is just going to be shining. <laughs> You're saying it's going to blind you with light? Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. Light bringer. See? Light bringer. Until with- he mm-hmm. deceives you and dies. Damn. Gets bald <laughs> I can't just get one. I can't get one. <laughs> so he's just on the helm of the ship, like lighting the way for the fog <laughs> of, the, of the ocean. <laughs> You Damn mean the, the red orange light of corruption? Oh my god. I feel like every time I feel like I'm getting assaulted from somebody in here, I, I can't actually get away with it, right? I'm like, oh yes. look, I, I someone re- helped me to reinforce the, the, the light bringer narrative, and then someone's like, nah. Mm-mm. Right at that moment where hope is waning. Anyway, let's talk about this. So there's another one here about the uh about nodes, gentlemen. And then, then there was one uh, Q and A topic that I thought was quite interesting. But I guess actually, before I talk about this node one, I, we were talking on uh, I think it was on my Twitch or whatever this, this past week, and we discussed the coastal waters. Right, like coastal waters is, are not PvP enabled. And as we're talking about the caravans and the caravan system and that sort of like line that 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 sort of um, zone, if you will, that when you get into it, like your caravan safe, when you exit back past that point or whatever, you're clearly like going to be attackable. I like that idea. Um, and it makes sense to me that you sort of get it within the zone that you're protected. Now, when we talk about the naval content, let's say that you're being chased out on the open waters, right out in the open sea, not the coastal areas, and you're trying to escape someone. And as you're escaping, you're running, you're trying to, you know, you're like outmanned, outgunned, you're you're not going to be able to hang, and you're just trying to get away, whatever the circumstances are. So when you are, you're booking it to the coastal areas, and you're getting closer and closer, like, here's, here's what I'm going to ask you all, and I'm not going to share my answer right away, because people probably know it already, but I'll share it afterwards. Do you feel that it is 
more positive or negative if a you basically enter this like coastal area and it's like oh can't attack me anymore or for example in like open world um well i think like world of warcraft right think about you go into a combat zone right you go into an area that's like not yours it's run by like the alliance and your horde and you're basically running around and you're in their area you leave their area right you're automatically flagged when you get in there but when you leave you've got a timer right i like that because it's like hey you were somewhere you shouldn't be just because you cross into an area that's your alliances doesn't mean that you're safe you're still flagged because you were somewhere dangerous, right? Just because you crossed a threshold and threshold into another zone or area doesn't mean that like that you're gone. You're still attackable. And I actually like that idea for the coastal area, right? Because like, yeah, sure, you can be trucking it or you know, selling your heart's desire to get there. But when you get there, it doesn't mean you're automatically going to be safe. I think. It kind of makes sense with like a caravan that, that maybe that would happen because you're sort of like under the protection of like the node, for example. At least that's how I would logically go about this. But coastal areas aren't necessarily it wouldn't make sense to me for that to be the case. So I am actually hoping there's a bit of a timer there, like a good old five minute timer or something. Because you imagine somebody who's like trying to go cause trouble, you know, pick on somebody bigger than them. And they can't hang. And then they're like, oh, no, let me. They're trying to do something like sketchy. They're trying to get the coastal nodes. It's like, if I just get there, I'll be safe and they can't attack me. Like that kind of like gameplay mechanic in the sea kind of would be lame, I think. But I don't know. What do you all think? Maybe I mean, you think, I think I'm wrong. No, no, I actually, I don't disagree with you. I'd maybe modify it a little. I, I think one of the things that Meat Hooks and I had some discussion in, in mm -hmm. Discord earlier this week about was like the rules consistency for PvP and open mm -hmm. world versus open sea. And I kind of see this as there's got to be a consistency thing. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right with the caravan, right? If you've got a caravan, you're going to have that, you know, 360 around the node, you're going to get there and, you know, you're you're good, right? You've you've made it past that dangerous point. If you're going just in coastal waters, I feel like number 1 you shouldn't be immune. Um, and number two, I don't, I'm not necessarily a fan of the timer. And let me explain. I would mm -hmm. rather it default to standard open world PVP rules, meaning you cross that threshold, you may be unflagged for PVP, but somebody that's motivated enough can still attack you. And if you don't return fire, then uh. they get corrupted. And so I, I, I would mm -hmm. see that that would be now again it's it's not necessarily going to discourage pvp right because number one your time to kill on a ship i would hope is a lot longer than it is you know for player versus player which is supposedly a decent amount of time right that's what they're saying is they want a decent ttk there. their goal yeah so, yeah their goal is to do that so i would i would think in those scenarios like you're not just going to sit there and take it right unless you're you know your ship is you know one or two shots from being sunk to begin with mm -hmm. you're gonna fight back and it's again it's gonna go back to those those rules so you don't even have like a five minute cooldown period or whatever it was in you know that blizzard game right it was it was uh just like you get there and you maybe have like a little bit of stay of execution because the person's like oh i, I don't may don't want to maybe don't want to risk corruption or maybe don't want to risk aggroing any like guards or something like that but it's outside of a caravan i feel like that's going to be a good balance it just reverts back mm -hmm. to the open world rules so there's no there's no um there's no lack of consistency between how pvp rules are applied interesting what do y'all think well how i see it is like if if the person hasn't attacked at all i'm fine with them being in the safe zone, right? But if they've if they've returned fire or they've initiated battle in any type of way, then they should be flagged, as you said, and put on a timer. Even if you enter the safe zone, you, you're still able to be killed because you have initiated or been part of a battle. Mm -hmm. like you shouldn't just be able to like think, go like go in between the line of safe and not safe. 
and just take pot shots at people until right. you can take them out. Like that's not shouldn't be okay yeah i couldn't stand that in like other games either where you could do that and you kind of like jump back in your city and hide you know or bind your guards or stuff like that where you're just kind of doing that sort of thing too to where people are going to be insta killed or something and you're there needs to be a little bit more flexibility in there but what else were you thinking because i thought you had some more to say because like in in the game that i play uh, a lot of is rust and they've got safe zones right right if you if you attacked anyone they give you a 30 second timer that you can't enter the safe zones in because you've already attacked ooh, someone. Ooh. However, and if you go into that safe zone, what ends, ends up happening is the turrets and the scientists and the NPCs actually kill you because you have been uh, attacking other people. Yeah. But then if you get killed by the outpost, like the safe zone, you now you've got a five minute timer and you can't enter the safe zone for five minutes. I like that. I actually like that a bit better, I think. What do you think, Faisal? Sleepy Faisal? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Faisal, man, he's like he's struggle busting this thing in there. Look at him. What was it two two thirty in the morning for you now almost? Two twenty three. <laughs> oh, you're a trooper, man. We're almost there, buddy. Uh what's it called? I mean, it is an interesting scenario, even though like I usually look at these guards or safety maneuvers as my assistants. Um they would just take care of any <laughs> high level monster for me and I get the loot and for reward. So, I mean, <laughs> the, it's a oh. double edged sword, guys. Come on. Let me have the easy life. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do, I do agree in that sense. Like, if, if it's going to be PvP, um, there should be a timer that does give you the zone of basically battle or commence a battle when you're unable to hide behind the city walls or gates but there is the scenario if if i have someone that's higher level than me by a lot chasing me down mm -hmm. um i think i think it, once the battle is initiated there should be a certain radius that uh, people can exit out of uh, and if they are able to that means that they've escaped and they're able to enter the town i think that's that should be fair huh? Huh? it's interesting how many different ideas we have because even between us we've got these different ideas and i don't know that we're all gonna agree on it it's gonna be something we definitely have to see tested i think there's even like some uh okay so here's one in chat for me i made it on like three three i think or maybe four comments in chat so me said i would say you are flagged until you dock at which point you are under normal rules once you dock a cooldown starts and if you set out from a dock before that timer is up you are auto flagged even in coastal areas now horrendous said i think it depends on the movement speed ship part made by ship builders and then milo said i think if you're a citizen of coastal node there shouldn't be any timer and Arthur saying also depends on the distance of how close you are to a safe area or a safe building or a city. And that's the interesting thing, too, because you've got where are you in proximity to like, you know, like a major city hub or something, metropolis, et cetera, versus like, are you just kind of getting into a, a, just a blank like coastal area? Right. And then should there maybe even be some different uh, variables that sort of play into into that dynamic as a whole. So if you're listening to this and you're watching this on YouTube later, like I definitely would encourage you to share your thoughts. Cause this definitely is a discussion that I think a lot of, we have a lot of different ideas about and because we haven't really seen it in action yet, it's hard to know what really is going to actually function best for the way that well, basically naval content and ashes works as a whole. There's a lot of factors uh, that I think are going to contribute to that. So Definitely, definitely curious to see what people think on this one. I want to hit on these last two Q&A bullets here, and we're going to kind of wind this down, okay? Um, the latter one actually is a bit of a lull one for me <laughs> because I, I found it hilarious. But the the, the second question here in the Q&A is, what is going to make nodes that are, aren't centralized popular? Will nodes close to the edge of the map have better or more unique aspects to them? That's an interesting question. Do you, do you give a level of uniqueness to some that are maybe further out? And the answer from Stephen was this. It said, In de it depends on what they mean by centralized. It is more or is important to note that the population of a world is both dynamic and static. There are portions of the spawn table of each node that will advance based on the advancement of nodes. So there really is no centralized aspect in that sense. 
There are strategically placed nodes that might be more important based on the type of gameplay you are targeting. If you are a merchant ship captain and need a harbor, then it's likely you will target a node with access to a harbor. But if you are a land caravan person, you don't care about the harbor and you want something that is situated close to a choke point, so that after the choke point, you can have the lay of the land to move the caravan around. That may be more important for you. From a content perspective, the content advances with the world, and that is something that removes this centralization. Materials will all have relevancy to end game play, and they're spread out and situated. So it's more situational than it is static relevant. The way that content is separated, the way that materials be separated, and the way that the zone are regionalized and the way that the transit matters ensures that regions will have important nodes, not one node for the whole world. So that's a very good answer. And I think that to me, I feel like you know, there's not a lot I could say about that. I feel like I, I'm completely on board with that. I think that it's that it very much should be a situational perspective. Certain things should have strengths and certain things should have weaknesses because I think that ties into the risk versus reward factor that is part of the one of the game pillars, yeah. We, we, gentlemen, any thoughts on that? I think if it was, if there was a centralized like component to it, it would defeat the purpose of having a dynamic world. You need to have mm-hmm. things and factors that change that propel or encourage change within the world. Otherwise, the world will get to a point and it'll stagnate. Um, and you'll not be able to really get to that branching design that the team has talked about with like different um, predicates occurring you would limit the amount of predicates occurring so you need to have things that drive either if it's changes in resources if it's a world event that maybe makes a world um, part of the world like more desirable or or not desirable to get people to migrate i think that's that's a core thing Uh, and so Great question. I think the answer was also equally like I'm on board with like the more change in the world um, that we can have, the more interesting the game will become. And it'll continue to um, encourage uh, emergent gameplay, which I think is one of the real selling points, the player agency and emergent gameplay opportunities that you'll have. Yeah, I, Mm. I definitely agree. Like, just because you're in the middle of the map doesn't mean it's going to be the most advantageous uh, spot, right? Like if you're on a coastal area, it might, you might be on a giant cliff face where you can't be attacked from all sides, but only the inland side. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be strategic advantages depending on where you want to build. Like that's what he's trying to say here. Like just because you, right. like, yes, there might be one area that's more trees, but it doesn't mean he's going to have more, more stone, more metals, more ores. Um, like there's each node is going to have their own ups and downs and, depending yeah. on what you want for a node, depend, it's going to depend on what node you go for. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, I mean, if you're in the center and the only thing you can have is uh, goddamn coconuts and bananas, it's not going to be worth it. Go on, bro. I need, I need valuable <laughs> things. I'm not going to make a banana boat nor a coconut boat. Let's be honest here. <laughs> you need the resources if the resources don't change there's uh, everything is going to be too rigid <laughs> i'm sorry i love face when he gets a little sleepy man he gets all he gets all like passionate but he's like sleepy and stuff it's hilarious I, that needs to be you on guys one of my those merch. <laughs> I, I know, get dude. Your point, I'm man. gonna clip it. I'm gonna clip it. Actually, at the end of this show, I swear I am gonna do it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mm-hmm. Need a shirt that says something about to the along the lines of coconuts and bidet. It just, dude. It's coconuts. Basil. Basil. There's gonna come a day when I have a little bit more time in my life, and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pull every Faisal clip and I'm gonna make a montage of all the things you've said. Some of them are a little concerning. Some of them were just downright hilarious. And these this was one of the more downlight downright hilarious ones. Consider it a phasal over the ages, if you will. 
a phasal <laughs> retrospective. I like it. Yeah, retrospective. <laughs> oh, nice. We got a clip in chat. There it is right there. I don't have to clip so that one. Cheryl, good looking out, homie. Okay, here's one. Question, do you think people will avoid nodes that are close to a castle? That's a good question. Thoughts on that one? Uh, Depends if the castle is theirs or not. Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I make a good point, my friend. I don't know. You got that castle? If no, probably no. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say, like, if the, uh, the castles, I think that the nodes in the castles are just going to grow no, mat no matter what, just because all the guilds are going to want those castles. So they're going to make like get experience around those castles which is going to make the nodes go higher anyway so if anything castles mm. are going to be pretty much the main ones i'm going to think mm. i mean it all it's a cost benefit analysis around the board though isn't it at the end of the day it's like what's like what's the benefit of being here in this location with everything going on and what's the potential cost because there's there's going to be cost and benefits regardless where you're at i think it just depends on the circumstances and yeah where are your friends at too dude i gotta hit this i gotta hit this last bullet point here this q a this was so good right so some mmos are not directly pay to win but rather indirectly pay to win because they do not take harsh enough action against gold buying will you be harsher on these players than other mmos to maintain the integrity of ashes aka will you permanently ban players who buy gold from third-party websites i love this there is a sanctity that must be... I'm going to do this in a voice that I think you're going to appreciate with Stevenism, okay? I hope. There is sanctity that must be protected within the game. In games that Steven has played, where the company publisher does not enforce rules, it becomes a standard that you buy gold if you want to be competitive, keeping in mind that Steven admitted that he bought gold before. And that is a very bad feeling to have. In order for... In order that not to be the case, it is the responsibility of the publisher developers to make sure that they have the stringent practices for a customer services perspective to enforce their rules and to make sure the players are aware if they participate in that. There is a huge risk in doing so. It will not be a slap on the hand with a strike system. They must ensure that it is feared to do such things. Ashes will have active GMs active customer services, and an active community team. Even prior to the game launching, there is a focus on community engagement that does not stop at the ship. There will be more once launched. That will be something that is intrinsic at... As a definition between Ashes and other games we have all played, it is a distinct point, and as much as such, from an enforcement of policy perspective, they need to be punctual when it comes to botting, RTMing, real money transfer, because of the sanctity of player achievement within the game when valuing risk versus reward, those things do a company or it is meaningless. I think it's funny because this isn't in here. But a part of this is he kind of ranted a little bit and he was like talking about how like when people when that game developers talk about being a uh, basically a game as a service. And he's like, well, then where is the service you're providing? And especially in regard to things like this. And it was such a good point because, man, ain't that the truth? When there's like no accountability for people that are doing stuff like this, and it's like you're providing a service and you say you're a game as a service or whatever, but you don't actually do anything to service the customer. That's a pretty good point. Any, you know what? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I actually I have a point on this. And what's yes. even more like infuriating mm. um, is yes, you have this black market for gold selling that occurs, but if you got some developers that are like, why don't we just cash in on that and mm. right it's and true. make that available? And now, now not only are you feeding that beast mm. right, which creates an an even bigger disparity and to mm -hmm. Steven's point that he made when he talked about gold purchasing in the past, it was like, in order to be competitive, you need to have a certain level of capital in the game. And if you don't want to like spend hours and hours and hours and hours, no lifing it, right. You're going to go mm -hmm. this route to be able to purchase currency. Um, and that's like, in my opinion, even like even a worse offense than deregulation right or lack of regulation which i think is definitely up there too mm -hmm. is the fact that now yeah. not only are you not regulating it you're also legitimizing it by doing it in game 
Yeah. Right. And I think that's that's a part, in my opinion, that's also important when you're talking about like games as a service. Right. Is that really a service that you're doing to the community or is it just another revenue stream? You're like, let me cash in on that because we know people are buying gold anyway. So rather than enforcing it and spending money and resources, which, again, is cost to us or overhead to us, let's take advantage of that and make that an additional revenue stream. Right. Which I think is shady. And I think like it's abs like there's back alley deals and then the then the big company's like hey you're making some money there i want to be in the back alley and they just like put some lights and like like little like a welcome sign they bring a shady person to the side here now now we want to cut of the that that shady dealings and it's like dark alley come over to our slightly brighter alley Like yeah, no, the same thing. Don't do that. He's in the glow, the blue glow of the Blizzard logo, right? We got oh, you. he said it. Oh, he said it. I was like, Oof. I was going to ask you if you were willing to say what. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I was referring. To can we re- that, can we reference specifically what you were talking about? Because I feel like it's important. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I can't I can't remember what they call it. It was like a a coin you could wow purchase tokens. on the wow tokens. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. it's. It's it's been a minute since I okay. played the Blizzard game. So so yeah, WoW tokens, which you could you could either now you could do it the opposite too. If like you went out and which is okay, this is okay, I'll I'll rant just for one Go more for thing. It, man. What I think is also pretty shady about that is now you have the opposite thing. Now you have all these gold farmers in the game that farm gold, like jack up age, prices, inflation, so on and so forth. Yeah. Not only now, now that they have this bank, they could also sell gold they can also buy subscription time as well right so now you're getting the revenue from both ends Mm -hmm. right is you're getting people playing the game selling gold you're Mm -hmm. selling you're purchasing or you're selling wow tokens for you know in-game currency and you're also saying okay well i've farmed xyz amount of currency i don't have anything to sink it into that's meaningful so let me just buy game time as well so yeah and then it goes into the whole. Then it goes into the whole like inflation of the market, and it's like, oh well, now now things are too expensive, and I can't do anything else except for buying the gold. So then I can buy the items because I can't mm-hmm. earn the gold to buy the items anymore because it's too expensive. Right. It's, it's, yeah. No. The house always wins. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> oh, bananas and coconuts, man! I'm telling you, dude. Look at Faisal. He's getting let's get Faisal's getting kind of low. Everybody, <laughs> remember what that means. When Faisal gets a little low, that's sleepy time. It's also we are coming up on the end of the show, and friends, we have we have arrived to the end of the show, friends. We are going to be curating some really fun community topics next week. Around And I have a feeling we're probably going to be jumping back into discussions on things related to the world map, locations, possibly some more things related to naval content, um, even potentially related to combat um, in that domain. I think that there's been a lot of conversations around that as of late. Um, so we're definitely going to probably chip in on that. Now, if you've got an idea for Nash's talk for a topic for the show, be sure to DM me on Discord. Shoot me a message at me in Discord. Catch any live streams here. Do it. Also, in Discord, in the Ashes discussion or Ashes Pathfinders uh, chat, you can do it there as well. Um, but, gentlemen, if you don't have any other thoughts, anybody? Final thoughts? No? Cool. Gentlemen, why don't we go on ahead and shout out your domains where people can find you when you're not on this show or when you're not on the show. Go Daedalus first. Okay. You can find me on Twitter at The Ashen Herald and on YouTube, youtube.com slash The Ashen Herald. An armored cell. The cult uh, leader. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash armored cell and uh, also in the deepest, darkest parts of your heart. Praise Stephen. Let this happen again. <laughs> and Faisal. You guys can find me on Twitch <laughs> as Faisal108 and on Twitter as Beagle108. Right, where he's actually using his social media a little more regularly. I saw something in the past week and I totally was happy to see you talking in the Twitterverse, my friend. Friends, 
Hey, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I, I might be, I might be 24, but I'm an old geezer for not using Twitter. Apparently, it's all right, man. <laughs> it became a necessity, a means to an end when you do content creation. So I never used it before doing any of this <laughs> stuff either. So I feel you. But friends, we are going to see you next week, okay? And it might be the end of today's show, but in closing, we got to remind all of you whether you watch us live, catch us on YouTube, listen to the podcast and the podcast places, um, that you are also an Ashes Pathfinder. So much love to all of you. Much love to my fellow co-hosts here today and Intrepid Studios. And until next time, live your best lives, walk in the dark light, and, dark, uh, light, and have a great night, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs> Bye for now. Adios. No one's coming in. Bye. <laughs>